All right, welcome everybody to week two feature matches. This is going to be our first feature match. Uh, I am Richard K. I'm uh, here solo for the time being. Uh, we have a match here between uh, two players who are actually teammates in the last league. We had a partners league, a double feature. So um, they were actually paired together. They were they, they didn't they they didn't know each other and they were paired together and uh, ended up hitting it off. And uh, here they are battling it out now in week two of league. And since they both represent different uh, crime families, since we're separated into five uh, groups for this league, they're facing off against each other here at the beginning of week two. Um, so we don't have uh, anything from Russell's point of view at this time, but we could see what Coleman, or username Avo is holding here. Uh, some lands and some black and blue cards. Uh, I do have the insight of a little bit about Russell's deck since uh, he is on the same uh, team as I or group as I, and we did actually have a do a practice match earlier today. So I know he's running a uh, a broker's deck. So he has the white and green there, and he also has some blue. Uh, blue seems to be his uh, his third color, so his 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 uh, least represented color. So. Uh, have a little insight into what, what's going on on his side of the board. So, looks like Coleman has green cards alongside his blue and black, which I don't know if there's a fourth color in there somewhere, since uh, Salt Eye is not one of the uh, combinations that we see supported directly in this set. Uh, but in, in League, when a, in a 60-card sealed format, you just have to play uh, the, all your best cards. So whatever your best cards are, you just put them in your deck. And if it ends up being green, blue, and black, then you play green, blue, and black. Um, so it looks like they're just trading off damage here on this turn. Uh, Russell has left some mana up, possibly for a counterspell. Uh, could be a warm welcome. I believe he has uh, one of those in his deck. So corrupt court officials coming down. See what Russell ends up discarding here. And the ominous parcel comes down. Uh, so he's already uh, three-fifths of the way to getting his five types in the graveyard, uh, which matters greatly since he has one card in play and two cards in hand uh, that all care about uh, compiling different mana costs in the in the graveyard. So it takes the trade here, and then he plays his Extraction Specialist to bring back the Rafine's Informant. Uh, so that Rafine's Informant won't be able to attack or block while the Extraction Specialist is in play. Uh, but obviously, very good value play here from Russell. So Coleman's deciding what to do here. Uh, could play his 3-3 Flyer. Could... Uh, Try and kill one of the creatures with the Grizzly Sigil, kill the Rafine's Informant, uh, bounce something. So he has he has a few different choices here. So let's see how he maps maps this turn out. So he's offering up the trade here, which Russell does not take. Uh, and then plays the three three flyer, so I I think he was he was really hoping for a trade there because I don't think he wants to block uh, the three two life link with his three three flyer, uh, so he's just gonna let Russell gain three life here. So let's see if there's a follow up here. He's just going for a Venom Connoisseur, so just adding a 2-2 to the board. So as I suspected, um, Coleman is playing more than the three colors he's he's representing as he's just trying to mount in. Uh, so assuming he has some number of red cards to cast. So he's going to send in with his flyer here. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have anything else to commit to the board, so he's, he's going to have to interact. Uh, with one or more of Russell's creatures here, uh, with the spells he has in hand. Hey, just woke up. No problem. Zeke is Start joining right? us. 
Zeke is joining us here. Uh, I, I put, uh, it was an error on my part. I meant to put six o'clock and I put six thirty. So, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, oh, we're, so you're in this. Anyway, we're all here now. Uh, I'm looking at it from Coleman's point of view, so uh, I will pull up. Brooke. Yeah. So they've uh, they traded off a couple things here. Uh, Russell brought back his Rafine's informant with the extraction specialist. Uh, now he's casting the Sparrows adjudicators uh, to lock down what probably the flyer. Looks like we're going with the other one. Okay, he's uh, he's deciding to go on the offensive here, uh, which is a fair play, which means he gets to attack here for five and gain three life. Uh, I figure something is going to get uh, pushed out of the way here. <laughs> or uh, dealt damage by the parcel, but... Pushed? Which push? The, well, out of the way, the card, uh, the blue card. The bounce spell. Oh uh, no! Okay. All right. He's just gonna he's just gonna take the five here and uh, just end step kill the four four. Yeah. So Russell, I I did I actually did play against him earlier today in a practice match. So I, I know a little bit of his deck. It's a bro basic broker's deck, base white green with uh, a few blue cards there. Yeah. We've got combat trick and removal. Right. For the family and buyer silence. All right, uh, I could see the buyer silence eventually being used on the snooping newsy or the infiltrator. I assume the pump. Spells. I can see it being discarded here. Also. Okay. But for the family, isn't bad. You're one free drop in the plus one. That, that is. That is true. In a race, which it looks like this might be coming down to, putting that on three two lifelink could be big. Yeah, well, I'm not sure how much of a race it is with uh, one person, one player gaining life and the other uh, not. But this Grizzly Sigil could, uh, this the, the the Grizzly Sigil could uh, make a nice life swing in Coleman's favor in a future turn. Uh, so he, he so right now Coleman is holding up uh, his tainted indulgence, or he could cast out of the way uh, for two mana on the green creature. But uh, I'd be surprised if he didn't just cast his tainted indulgence here. Uh, at the end step. We got a shovel, which I assume is coming down. Looks like we're checking for uh, citizens. Uh, Not, I don't think we've got any. No. Uh, the, the informant is a wizard. I know that. Uh, the venom connoisseur, I think, is a druid of some kind. Uh, I wish it would I wish it would be clear which, which creatures were citizens. I wish you wouldn't have to check all the time. Yeah. Most of the time, like if something's a goblin or a vampire or whatever, you just look at you just look at the art and you're like, yeah. <laughs> mm, I don't know. The vampires this set, like I sometimes have trouble picking them out. I guess so. Looks like we're cashing in the for the family here. All right. Yeah. This is this is a good use of his trick. He's gonna kill the creature. He's gonna get a very nice life cushion here, just in case it ends up going becoming a race. Yep. We'll see. So Coleman's just going to take the damage and I'm going to cast his Tainted Indulgence. Yeah, so Shovel gets casted post-combat. Since it could not equip anything for one, uh, there was no point playing it. So Coleman's drawn two lands, one of which is going to end up being discarded to the Tainted Indulgence. And draws a Witness Protection. If you put that on the specialist, can the Rafines inform an attack and block? Uh, I think you would have to check the the text if if the Rafines informant's uh, text is, yeah. is is altered by altered? it. I don't think it is. Interesting interaction. I don't know if here's. I don't know if this is the time where he wants to experiment and see if that does work or not. Uh, you know, I mean, he might not. If he, if he could witness protection, the extraction specialist, then it would keep the Rafines informed from blocking and attacking. That would be uh, something he would obviously very happily do. Uh, yeah. But the witness protection is only so effective against the shovel because the shovel can just give plus two plus one trample to a one one and, and you get a, a citizen then. Uh, ah, he'll, he'll get a he'll get a discount for equipping, which we did see on stream last week as well. We we saw twice where witness protection came back to. Uh, to bite the person that cast it. 
In one case, somebody was able to equip a shovel, and in another case, somebody cast a Darling of the Masses, uh, and their otherwise non-citizen got, got pumped. Uh, so this actually did work here. There, uh, he's actually used the Witness Protection, to, and he's he's now locked down both of the creatures. Uh, so it did work. Since I think the Rafine's Informant just cares whether or not the, um, the Specialist is on the battlefield or not. I think so. Yeah. So he's, he's going to bounce this here to draw a card. But because uh, it is a static ability on the business person, I thought it might be fine. But it... Yeah, it looks like the witness protection uh, is doing what he was hoping, but uh, it's basically taken away the lifelink and made a bit of a smaller creature, but it's not its not, its not, not uh, solved the problem permanently, which is uh, an issue we see with uh, witness protection uh, seemingly again and again. So he has a Backstreet He's Bruiser got... here. He has the Grizzly Sigil left in hand. Not too much to do with it right now. Uh, he could sack his Corrupt Court Official to kill the Venom Connoisseur. Uh, not sure how great that is. Right, so he is going to go like ahead and... Yeah, he is going to go ahead and do that play. Uh, just to get the Venom Connoisseur off the board. It's a bit of a curious play since the Backstreet Bruiser uh, can trade with it. I assume the bruiser is going to trade with the business person here. Now, now he's thinking about just firing it off on the Rafine's informant without sacking, but I can't. That doesn't work either. So he's he's getting rid of the Venom Connoisseur um, yeah. and then setting up a trade with the legitimate business person, uh, formerly known as the Extraction Specialist. It's funny how the Extraction yeah. Specialist had to be the one extracted into witness protection. Wouldn't, they, they, they would usually be the ones who are in charge of getting people into witness protection, but now they themselves... Really? I feel like you hand people off and they take care of it. I don't think the person who extracts does the paperwork for witness protection. Well, they're part of the process. No, that's fair. <laughs> so he... We've got a voice of the vermin, which is probably coming down here. Alright, that's gonna that's gonna make this quite, quite difficult for Coleman unless he draws uh, something impactful because he can equip that and it could be a six power trampling with a shield counter on it. Uh, Which it looks like we're swapping that over right now. So, so Coleman's drawn an Echo Inspector which will essentially mill a card uh, when it enters the battlefield since he has no cards at hand. Uh, so the conniving will just essentially mill one. Uh, Our last card is Disdainful Stroke which we'd have loved to hit that with. So unfortunately, he actually, the Echo Inspector is a 2-3 here, which, instead of a 3-4. But uh, either way, this, uh, the crowbar's coming down. Crowbar. I think we're re-equipping the crowbar already, yeah. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, he can, he can, he, up, he can, uh, it up. yeah, he can yeah. remove the, the witness protection now. Yes. So what's uh, the vermin... Okay, Vice of the Vermin is going to target okay. Extraction Specials, which basically means that uh, all the blocks are, are bad. I mean, yeah, you're just getting the shield counter off that. and uh, He's just knocking off a shield blocks, counter and going to going to two here with uh, this Chrome Cat off the top. Doesn't look like it's good enough. I mean, he has enough toughness on board to, um, to not die next turn, but... Uh, don't know what the plan going forward after that will be. Apologize if there's background sound. There's uh, some yard work going on outside. So the Chrome Cat scries uh, Mr. Orf Orfeo to the bottom, and uh, Coleman's just going to block so as to not die here. Uh, we drew a Rock's Pummeler. So we can't cast that. Okay, and the other card in hand we're just thinking about where to stroke. put the shovel. Yep. Looks like we're gonna leave the shovel. Yeah, the shovel is probably fine where it is. And so, yeah. Yeah. So everything has to be blocked here. Um, and something is chumping a citizen. Yeah. He can. Yeah, he can trade off two of the creatures trade and off. then. 
and then chump block, and uh, then the Rafim's informant will now be unlocked, making it a lethal threat as well. And uh, uh, he just died this way because he took it anyway. Yeah, he needed to block slightly different there. Uh, either way, that was a that was a bit of a rough ending there for for Coleman. Just the the draws didn't really work out in his favor. Like, he had some interactive spells, but they just weren't really where he needed to be. Like, Grizzly Sigil and Out of the Way, I mean, you know, they're okay, but they, they weren't impactful enough here. So looking at his sideboard, uh, see what he decides. So looking now at his deck, it seems he's just, like, very firmly a Sultai deck, which is unusual for this format. And he's splashing some of the red cards that um, Maestros and Riveteers offer. Mm. So he's basically four color deck. All his red cards are gold cards, but uh, yeah, uh, the base of his deck is is blue black. But he's also running cards like Warm Welcome and Freelance Muscle alongside um, three color cards and blue and black cards. Well, let's see what he. We're pretty standard brokers. Yeah. With the uh, lighter blue splash. I'm seeing Titan in the industry. That's exciting. That's a good one. Yeah. Let's see what Nelson decides here. I think he's uh, looking at removing some number of the witness protections. Uh, he had two. I think he's removing one. We're running three for the families. That's a lot of combat tricks. Uh, well, I mean, if you if you're relying on combat and just getting in with I your guess. creatures, um, you know that that is a way. to to, to do things, especially if you're not lacking removal, uh, combat tricks can sometimes I guess if the plus one is more from... often also, it's a lot better. Alright, so Coleman's got a got a keepable hand here. He's got, got a keepable one also. He's got a couple of fetch lines here to fix. Yeah. And he's got a corrupt court official that he can put down on turn two. And uh, he's got a four drop and a five drop to deploy uh, later in the game. We've got green and white lands, but uh, oh, we just drew another two drop. But we had Rafine's informant, kill shot, and the shovel. I don't know how many Rafine's informants uh, Russell has, but I know when I played him in a practice match, he had one on turn two every uh, all three of the games. So I assume he has uh, you know multiple. All right, the Illuminator of Starting Virtuoso. Starting off with the Virtuoso, though. Yeah, that one's been uh, been the source of a lot of surprise victories I've seen uh, in draft and. Uh, that that thing can get in a, a lot of damage out of nowhere. I approve. I've done this many times. Excellent. This explains all the four of the families. That with the Illuminator, Illuminator Virtuoso will kill somebody uh, very quickly. I wonder if he has Disciplined Duelist as well, which is the other uh, obnoxious uh, double striker at uh, Uncommon. <coughs> Looks like we're just going to... Yeah. Yeah. We'll get our informant down. Yeah, Col Coleman could have tried to block with the uh, Midnight Assassin. Uh, made uh, Russell <laughs> use a spell. Uh, yeah. I, I think I think uh, uh, Coleman's plan is to cast out of the way targeting the Illuminator Virtuo, so uh, that's when he'll block when he has uh, four mana up to bounce it. In the Apparently the we are aggressive. We are not killing attacking creatures here. Yeah, I did. Yeah, when playing against Russell, I noticed he was not doing very much blocking. Uh, he was interacting with 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 my creatures that were uh, trying to block him, rather than interacting with my threats that were attacking him. Uh, so yeah, that just shows that he's uh, pretty focused and dedicated uh, to his aggressive plan here. Which makes sense because we've got shovel and a flyer in hand. Yeah. Although, I do re I do remember he bested me with multiple copies of uh, the exotic pets that were always uh, one of them was always a two two. He he always had a counter on something whenever he cast it. Yeah, it's pretty easy to counter in a broker stack. So Rafine uh, silencer here. He has a, he has some options. Um, I, I he has a freelance muscle he can cast next turn. He has a swamp he could discard. So now he's. He might not hit his fifth line drop, but he does still. He will still be able to cast the out of the way next turn, um, leave up mana, uh, 
maybe induce a combat trick out of Russell and then be able to to tempo him. I don't know about that. Right, so he's just chump blocking here. He doesn't want to. Uh... Uh, that's a trade, right? Oh no, Sorry, yes, it is, a, it is one, a trade. Uh, if unless he uses a trick, so I guess yeah. he is making Which... him uh, use a trick here. That is true. Doesn't look like we're doing the trick. We could do the or, trick. well. We do the trick afterward, but he was yes. hovering over the fairy vandal, so I'm not. So we are going for the fairy vandal. Okay. And then the for the family? I'm not sure why the... Oh, we're conniving. Right, we're drawing. Yes, he's going to be able to trigger the fairy vandal this way. Durr. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah. So let's see what... So Coleman can either just play his freelance muscle, which will... Uh, a four four, which will block as a uh, a five five, I suppose. Uh, or he could leave up his mana for the out of the way, the the bounce spell that draws a card. Yeah. So this will just decide whether he he's really afraid of the virtuoso. If he's really afraid of the virtuoso, I guess he'll leave up the bounce spell. So that that shows uh, he really doesn't want to get surprise damaged uh, out of nowhere by this virtuoso. So he's going to leave up this bounce spell to protect himself rather than play a creature. Well, our hand consists of ways to pump him, so... We've got the shovel, and then we just drew a voice of the vermin. Yeah, the problem is Which... now, now that the Illuminator virtuoso, virtuoso is a 2-2, Coleman doesn't have like any active blocks that are actually good. Uh, so he... He's not forcing Russell to play the combat trick, which would then make that of the way more of a blowout. Like when he had a bigger creature in play, he just, you know, he had the, or when the virtuoso was smaller, you know, he had the option of blocking it. So here he just has to, he just has to bounce it and it's just going to come back down and he's still going to have all of his tricks uh, up for future turns. Doesn't look like it's coming down this turn. We're getting the voice down first. That makes sense. We can't double spell no matter what because we are stuck sense. on the one white. Oh, nope, we swap back. No, he, he's... So, Russell... Had, uh, Coleman... I think we might be hoping for land yeah. to go shovel equip. Yeah, so Coleman's drawn a hostile takeover here, uh, which he can't cast yet, but he has an ominous parcel in his hand, and he has the glamorous outlaw, so he has two ways of making sure he can cast it on a future turn uh, in hand. Um, so he's at 17, so he... if. If Russell wants to get aggressive and just make attacks, he could take some of the damage now and, and try and you know get some value out of the hostile takeover in future turns. Uh, or he can try and protect his life total and just keep the hostile takeover for much later. Uh, we'll see how he decides to proceed. Uh, probably starts by casting the ominous parcel. So, just based on looks, uh, what creature types do you think that Glorious Outlaw is? The Glamorous Outlaw? Glamorous, yeah. Uh, it's a human, rogue... I don't know. That one is actually a vampire. There you go. Even the vampires are sometimes just blending in. It is a rogue, though, right? I think it's a rogue. Yeah. The, the relevant thing is... Uh, there is one card that cares about vampires entering the battlefield, so I had to hunt for vampires in a draft recently. Yeah, it's the the rare Evelyn, right? Yeah, and that's one of the few vampires that that I found. Okay, good to know. We drew our Death Touch dude, which is also coming down. Okay. So the last card you said was the um, voice of the the voice of the vermin, right? So this is this is setting up quite nicely for a hostile takeover here. To to wipe out all of the creatures. Yeah. Yeah, he's just gonna soak up the damage here, and then he's he's just gonna 
He's just gonna kill three creatures with the hostile, or four creatures with the hostile takeover now. That's a nice little four for one. Yeah, that's well. That, well, that's what that card does. That, that card is just one of the best yeah. cards in the set. Uh, yeah, the card can bring you back from almost any situation. Well, a lot and of it also you're hits your opponent. Some of your own creatures. It also, yeah, but it also like it's a board wipe that also deals four damage to your opponent every time, sometimes more. True. Like, it's devastating. Like, yeah. ooh, we just drew disdainful stroke. Okay. <laughs> So he's casting Voice of the Vermin here. So, so we get to put the shovel on, so that's still coming in pretty yeah. big next turn. So Coleman just has a, a host of, of good-sized creatures in his hand here. The Freelance Muscle, the Glamorous Outlaw, and now a Jewel Thief that he drew last turn. Uh, so he's so he's going to have creatures to, to cast here. He is going to have to feed something to the Voice if he wants to get that shield counter off. Uh, maybe just the Midnight Assassin. Or maybe he wants to save that to do the trading with it. Yeah, so he's casting this Glamorous Outlaw here, which is going to help him set up for future turns. Uh -huh. So he sees a Witness Protection and a Corrupt Court Official. You keeping the Wit Pro? Yeah, he's keeping the Witness Protection. Um, that makes but sense. the Shield Counter still is still on the creature, even if it's in Witness Protection. That is true, but it will be a... 3-2 yeah, no, shield the, counter, the, which just which is still, gets bricked by the 4-5. Yeah. So On like a 6-5. Yeah, he's just going to take yeah. 6 here, and then he's going to put the witness protection uh, on the Voice of the Vermin, and uh, likely cast this freelance muscle, which will be countered. Yeah. Hmm. See, yeah, this is this is where when I'm playing against blue, I think I want to cast my creature first to see if it gets countered, and then decide whether I want to attack. Yeah. Uh, we got mill one with the feeds informant. Yeah. So yeah. So when, when you when you play your creature first main phase, you then know uh, you have more information uh, about yep. whether you'll be able to block or not next turn. Because uh, he could have just left his outlaw back if he's worried about losing to pump spells, which Russell has shown he he is playing. So Rafine's informant's gonna mill a card here. Maybe it'll be a uh, just a land. Yeah, so it's just a two one. I assume we get in for our three. Yeah, you can get it for three, and then he can re he can equip to the Rafine's inform, but that doesn't make it that doesn't make it have blocks here. No, but it'll have better attacks than the other guy next turn. Well, I guess he still has a shield counter. Yeah. Won't quite get up to five power either. We're not okay, attacking. So yeah, so Russell has decided to, to pump the brakes here a bit. He realizes it's not a race that looks like he'll, he'll win. Uh, so he's decided to sit back here. Double block. Uh, yeah. So if he double blocks, he you know it gets the Rafine's informant and the shield counter uh, off. He's just gonna yeah. he's just gonna knock in with his flyer here and play a jewel thief. Yeah. He drew a land for turn, so he's just holding a swamp in hand. We've got slip out the back now. Okay. Which, eh? Yeah, it's a it's a protection spell. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, help you in combat particularly well. But uh, I think no matter what, we're gonna have to pop it off just for the counter. At some point. Yeah. Well, he could he could block with it first and then slip out the back. That's true. Yeah. That would be the time to use it if there was an attack. Oh, so Coleman's drawn a pretty impactful masked bandits here, the 5-5 five, five, uh, Vigilance Menace. That's going to that's gonna yeah. dominate, or help help him dominate the board. So he's going to attack here for one. He's going to play his 5-5. Five, five. Uh, and he could pretty... 
you could pretty confidently start attacking with the with the vigilance menace next turn. I mean, between the trample on the jewel thief and the the menace on the the mass bandits, yeah, it's looking like Russell might be staring down uh, lethal shortly. Uh, we drew by your silence, so we can get something out of here nicely. Okay. Um, so, what do you think is the is the is the prime target? Is it the five five? The five five. Yeah. Vigilance, menace. Yeah, no, that, that, that can't stay. Yeah, he he can keep taking one from the flyer for the time being, but uh, he can't yeah. take he he can't lose his life totals in chunks of five. And if he's double blocking that, then he dies. So he's, it looks like we're just thinking about it still. I, well, he's he's weighing his attacking? options. Uh, you know, he, uh, like I mentioned before, he is aggressively leaning in his tendencies. So maybe he's thinking about what what application of by your silence is going to give him the best attacks. But I still think that would be getting rid of the five five either way. Yeah. Maybe you're thinking of attacking and bluffing a pump spell or something, but removing a post combat. But I don't think that's gonna work. I think no. you need your creatures back. He's just come to the come to the conclusion that the five five is just too big, and the vision yeah. vigilance menace is not something he can deal with. All right, so another swamp here for for Coleman. So uh, the top deck wars continue. I mean, if nothing changes, then this assassin could go all the way. Yeah. Uh, got another dorky little creature. Yeah, the, yeah. That. That's not. So probably uh, not attacking anytime soon. Still. All right. So. Midnight. So midnight assassin will get in again. He's drawn a snooping newsy here, which will be a a three three life linker. That'll be nice to have. Yeah, it's good to have some some life cushion. Uh, though of note, yeah. uh, the f if the life linker interacts with the shield counter, uh, he he won't get yeah any no life. life. Uh, he's milled two lands here, which I'm sure he's uh, pretty happy about. Does not want to see more lands at this point. We've drawn a land, so yeah, it looks like this, this the the status quo is maintained of uh, midnight assassin attacking for one and. Uh, the board not really changing. Mm, right. I could see the news he getting in. I mean, it would just trade with the shield counter and gain you three. But <coughs> well, then the no, you, 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 you wouldn't you wouldn't gain the three. Oh right, right. Because uh, the shield counter right. prevents the yep, damage. Yep, yep. Uh, we drew a pump spell, so we might go for lethal here. Probably is it the a libations? Oh, okay. That's that. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a, yeah, that's with a plus five. trample on the shovel. We've that's got a, a land, so we can go up to six. That's a plus five right there. Six. We've got a land. Oh, okay. So notably, the shovel has removed trample from the the sh the shovel is not granting the legitimate business person trample. Right now, mm, that actually is an issue, yeah. Because of the witness protection, so I guess uh, that's that's uh, that's the layers. <laughs> Looks thing like that, we're moving uh, it over, and well, we're gonna. That's the layers thing. Go for this next turn, uh, perhaps. Judges need to know about. Yeah. Although, if I remember right, for layers, if he moves the shovel back, it gains it again. Could be. That. You'd have to ask a, a judge for sure to know. Because I think that's timestamps. Yeah. Makes sense. Here's the thief. Yeah, so the thief's getting in now you've, because he's not getting brick rolled by the shield counter. And it's also I, lethal. So he has to block. To. Yeah, he has to block. And uh, if he blocks with the 4-2, he'll still trample over for one. 
which is pretty big here. It looks like we're just trading the shield counter in to save a life, which... He's going to go down to one, then? Unless he's... No. Is he casting the libation on defense? That I don't be... know. That would be surprising. It would indeed. No, we're just going to one. Okay. And uh, probably trying to crack back here for as much as we can. Looks like we're casting a slip out the back for the counter. Okay. Oh, no, we're getting the newsy out of here. We're using it as removal. That makes a lot of sense. This. Okay. Oh, we got another option. We drew in uh, as far as adjudicators. So we could slap okay. that down, stop the assassin for a turn. But no, we're going for it. All right. Um, I mean, this is... Libations also gives plus one, plus one to the uh, socialite, because it makes a token. Right. But this is, this, this, this is not going to be lethal here. Uh, or, so he can get, get it up to 10 power trample. Which is still not uh, not lethal here. It looks like we might be casting libation for X equals one. Yeah, and then this is my guess, which will kill both your creatures. It'll trade off the teams. Yeah, so it'll trade. Uh, so both. So and then all, you so cast all the, creatures, the adjudicators. Yeah, cast the adjudicators. But then there's a four for lifelink down. staring down him next, like the turn after. Which you trade with the adjudicators yeah but the life gain is going to make it that much that oh, much yeah. more difficult for russell to uh to get it for damage here true or er, x equals two don't do x equals two then you can't play the adjudicators yeah oh. for, for me it was a bit of a, a, a risky attack x equals two oh okay You're just dead to the flyer now, aren't you? So he's uh, left himself dead. I think so. Was that a misclick or? Is there a treasure I'm missing or something? Um, doesn't doesn't seem to be. He seems to have four mana left over, which is not enough to cast a five drop. Yeah. Yeah, we can see. It. Yeah. I mean, he was behind, but uh, if he had the Adjudicators, I mean, there's still... You know, that means he's not dying next turn. So... Yeah. Some, uh... I wonder if we just did the math wrong on how much lands we had. Yeah, some, some strange usage of, uh, of some of those spells, obviously. It must have been either a miscount of the lands, a uh, misclick. Either way, uh, unfortunately, he left himself dead there. Uh, and what was a very tight game... But, uh, you know, Russell was still in it even after losing four of his creatures to the hostile takeover. Uh, yeah. So game three looks to be another, uh, could, could be another long one as well. So it looks like he's putting back in uh, the second copy of Witness Protection. Get rid of Grizzly Sigil. We've got uh, two informants. I know you were wondering how many there were. Okay. It just it just happened that uh, when we played a practice match, he drew one of them uh, all three games, yeah. which uh, got him off to a very good start because that's one of the that's one of the better two drops uh, you can find a common in this set. Oh yeah, especially since there are a decent chunk of uh, threes that care about a counter, either the fish or the the celestial uh, regulator. Yeah, yeah, the, the both Rafines of Horn and back of a back of agent have been very solid. Uh, in draft, league uh, league's a bit different, but quality two drops still go a long way. Uh, later on in the league, they're less important as people's decks are just really scary machines. But in these early weeks, you know, having two drops that can that can smooth you out uh, is vital, really. I don't know if you hit a critical mass with the two drops, then you can actually hit an aggro deck, which so rarely I feel like works out in these leagues. Yeah, in sixty card sealed, it's going to be difficult. You have to. Have be really uh, lucky or get really focused packs that just allow you to push yeah. all, all aggro. Because the other decks are just going to be so strong in, starting from the middle weeks. 
Uh, all right. So Coleman. So it looks like Russell's off is green so far. Yeah, we have exotic putts here, which I'm guessing just comes down. Yeah. So Col- Coleman has a, a very slow hand. He, it's it's all things that cost four and up. So next turn he'll be able to start deploying things. Uh, he has the Mr. We've got, Wolf, uh, the Boulder, Echo Inspector, Deal Gone Bad. So he has things to play, but uh, hopefully he doesn't fall out of the game uh, in these... We, we're not going to be able to punish that. Uh, we need a green source. Actually, we need three. We've got the Titan of Industry, we have a Civic Gardener, and then we've got Kill Shot and Slip out the back. So okay. you're looking at the only creatures we can play right now. So he's not casting much, at least... Uh, I mean, Coleman will be able to consistently cast a card every turn for the next several turns. Uh, he'll start yeah. off with the Echo Inspector here. Probably get rid of one of the excess lands he's holding, since he's holding two lands. Or he could just discard the expendable lackey he just drew from the conniving. That sounds better. Mm, we've got a crowbar, so at least we've got something to do now. Yeah. I, I, I did run into a situation against this against, like this against uh, Russell in one of our practice games where he was actually, it was the same situation, he was actually off green, but he just kept pumping the, the fish, like putting counters on them, and uh, just, like, he was just able to deal damage to me with the fish while I was playing, like, one card a turn, which is what Coleman's doing. Looks like we are moving the crowbar over and being aggressive with the fish. Yeah, well, I mean, if he can't cast, uh, if he can't cast too many of the spells in his hand, he's just trying to deal as much damage as he well, can. Well, we could have left up kill shot. I don't think he's concerned about this attacker right now. That's fair. I think he's concerned with uh, getting in for damage. That's fair. So, although we definitely should have left up blue for slip of the back. The equip cost is colorless, right? Uh, I believe it's two of anything to equip. Yeah. Yeah. Or wouldn't have required the blue for sure. So yeah, we could have left it back. So this looks like uh, I think Coleman's considering casting his Mister Orfeo, which will double the power of the Echo Inspector if, if he decides to attack with it. Mm. Which I figure he would. Because yeah, when, especially if you're doubling it. Yeah, that's that, that. That's one way to race the fish is by attacking for six in, in the air. Yeah. Yeah. So he's come yeah. to that conclusion. See, so, and that's where leaving up kill shot would have been. Uh, I mean, he could leave it up next turn. Uh, That's true. He couldn't have put uh, Coleman on... Oh, here's on. our green source, though. He couldn't have put Coleman on being able to double the power of the Echo Inspector. So. Aren't there a lot of things that do that? I feel like there's a lot of doubling. I guess the valet does it for himself. Uh, I mean, there's the double strike equipment, the brass knuckles, but I haven't seen very yeah. much of that. That one doesn't show up too often. Well, it's not anywhere near as good as Ark's better. Oh. Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> you use this platform to extol the virtues of, uh, of, of our arc spider is the greatest equipment uh i've ever used uh i've equipped it to two creatures and my opponent has conceded both times not to the arc spitter but oh, like, i was, I was just... wondering if it was like a hundred percent positive <laughs> correlation between arc spitter being on the stack and opponent not wanting to play the game anymore or if it was just other circumstances mm. No, no. All right, so the kill shot looks to be... They didn't even concede uh, it on the stack. It usually gets equipped and then sits on a defensive yeah, creature for a looks while. Looks like our it's... poor Echo Inspector is getting kill shotted here. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, before its power could even double. How sad. So if Coleman wants to uh, continue to try and push threats, he's going to cast his Glamorous Outlaw. Otherwise, he could uh, take this time to try and interact with... Uh, Russell, he has Extract the Truth, which can get a creature out of his hand. Uh, and, he has, uh, and he has a Deal Gone Bad, which can kill the 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 2-2 two -two fish. So, looks like instead of casting the Glamour Assault Law, he's deciding to be a bit more defensive uh, this turn, since uh, he can't take... Yeah, this Titan he can't, he can't is coming out. Three. Yeah, that is... We were a uh, long way from casting that anyway. That is a Titan of Industry uh, that has sadly been placed in the graveyard for Russell. And now not, you guys not know so about sadly about for Coleman. I mean, he could... I mean, we've seen him fire off, slip out the back uh, to try and remove uh, a blocker, but he's going to keep it up here as protection. Uh, so the oh, deal, yeah, so, sure. so there's a deal gone bad that... Uh, Coleman is almost certainly going to be casting since he's got nothing else. But now that he sees the slip out the back, it's uh, it's a lot less appealing. 
this is kind of a strange game here, a strange little cat and mouse game here of who's going to, is he going to fire off the deal going bad f into the into the phasing out? Uh, I, mean, I don't he think you do, because all it does is pump to your opponent's creature, though. Uh, I mean, he does have the backup removal on board with the parcel. I guess. I guess you could do that and then hit it with the parcel. And exotic exotic pets is just so good. Like it's it, 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 like Coleman might be using two real cards to kill half of half of a three mana card. So well, he, but you'd be trading for a real card also. So he did not fire off the the deal gone bad. Uh, looks like he's just going to play glamorous outlaw. See if you can scry himself to some to some way to to stop taking damage from all these fish. Uh, so he's found a Rafine Silencer uh, and a land which he put to the bottom and the Silencer he kept on top. So notably he did play his land instead of possibly keeping it to uh, discard away to the Silencer. Click with Trumpet. Russell is uh, protecting his life total here. Because, I mean, he has this guaranteed damage from the fish on board, so he just says, I need to stay alive long enough to, to make sure that these get in. Yep. So that means throwing we away his other creatures. combat spell. Refuse to yield. Okay, so the, that does mean that he's uh, he's pressing for, for more damage here. He could, he, with the combination of slip out the back and uh, the pump spell... Are we threatening to blow up the parcel? Uh, or are we it, just wanting a 3-3 blocker? I'm not sure what the 3-3 blocker is providing here. I guess it can it can eat one of the creatures that attacks. So. I guess with the refusal to yield, it gets to eat anything. Yeah, because it'll get to be 5 power and uh, infinite toughness. But the, the, the 5 power is big here. because uh, Not it, infinite toughness, but barely ten. enough toughness. 10? Well, this guy's going to have 8 attack. Yeah, well... When you refuse to yield, you can stop just about anything. I mean, I could see him just uh, letting letting this happen. I could see him trying to use his refuse to yield. Uh, to, like to push we're through damage. Out the back? Okay, he's gonna slip out the back on that. So now um, his fish is protected from the deal gone bad by the by the plus two plus seven. I guess is that what we're doing here? This just seems bad. Yeah, it means that neither of uh, Russell's uh, pump spells. Are, I mean, slip out the back being. Uh, you know, it, 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 it turns know into a pump spell. Uh, that means that neither yeah. neither of them are being used to pump his fish, fish during goes attacks. Down. So he does yeah. not he does not save his fish here. Well, you can't use the face at the or uh, slip out the back to pump the fish in combat. Well, he could have used the refuse. But the to counter's yield. not he could going have used, to it. Uh, he could have used yeah. refuse to yield to. Uh, well, we still have it to protect so the fish. Can. Yeah. Okay, That's he's drawn. True. He's drawn a. Coleman's drawn it out of the way, which looks like it's going to be pretty useful here. Um, I'm just confused as to what he thinks his gardener is going to do. So Coleman discarded his uh, graveyard shift. It doesn't really... He has an echo inspector, I suppose, in the graveyard, but uh, out of the way as an interactive spell is more important to him here, he decided. So he's attacking with Gardner because has vigilance. Uh, looks like Rafine I mean, uh, yeah, Silencer just, is pretty much you know it's a pretty much a forced block. Um, yeah, you get to eat the fish then, yeah. or try to, but like they're wasting a combat spell here. Like at that point, damage is already done. Yeah, and I mean Check if he, if he saves it, it's two damage that he did not use in combat to to affect his opponent's life total. 
which yeah, I'm saying I, I think I'd have rather. To do. So that's another flyer Sweat here. Um, Are we just destroying the parcel? No, uh, we're re-equipping the equipment. No, he's gonna his equipment here. So, so Coleman, I think, is going to end up using the parcel on the Pegasus and the bounce spell on the fish, because uh, bouncing the Pegasus does not remove it, while bouncing the fish yeah. essentially is a kill spell. So he's gonna he's gonna send yeah. in for he's gonna send in for eight here. I mean, the Seek Gardener is probably chumping, or are we just taking the eight this turn? In which case, why didn't we take it last turn? Yeah, he's taking eight here. So, uh, okay. unfortunately for Coleman, despite having enough uh, mana to, play, to, to exile his expendable lackey and then do one of the other things he could do, he does not have the blue mana to do that. Well, uh, we drew what we think is going to do that. We drew a shovel. So Shovel is going to go on the Flyer, which is then going to get... Uh, might go on the Citizen. Yeah, uh, yeah that gives it a, a good attack here. Yeah, that is troublesome now. Now he might be... I don't think so. I mean, now you just get to bounce the Gardener, kill the Flyer, and when you're cracking back, the fish is trumping or dead. Like, if the fish attack, you're dead on the back. Crack back. Yeah. I don't think this is that. Like, maybe you just trade the package for the gardener now. Yeah, that, that means that the flyer is still active, though. Well, right now we're not attacking with the flyer. It looks like we're still figuring out attacks. But right now it's just the gardeners in the red zone. But if you're attacking with both, you can take three in the air. Yeah. Kill the fish and then crack back. Yeah, if Russell actually does choose to attack with something else here, he might be leaving himself uh, dead. Almost I think he's just dead, period. Because sure. you can still just double removal. Yeah. Well, I guess he gets to chump then. Well, he has to do something about this five power attacker, right? Yeah, but like the answer's on board. The parcel. Yeah. Also taking his time here. I mean, he's yep. decided on just the one attack, uh, which forces uh, it forces Coleman to do something, uh, whether it's bounce or kill it. Right. So he's decided yep. to parcel kill it. Another, another, another tight one here. Another one that's going to come right down to the, to the wire. Mm. I mean, at this point, we just so out of the way is going to get cast here on the Pegasus for two. Uh, he's drawn a murder, which uh, simplifies all of this. Lethal, yeah. Uh, if he really wanted to, he could have cast his Unleash the Inferno and then blew up one of the equipments as well. But uh, he yeah. decided to just, just, just a murder will suffice here. So, uh, uh, very, very, very tight game here once again, pulled out by Coleman. So, uh, congratulations to him. And that was round one. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see everybody back in a little bit for round two.